Hey everybody, Dr. G here. I'm a licensed clinical psychologist and body language expert, and today we're going to be analyzing behavior and body language from Kayla Montgomery. Kayla Montgomery is the stepmother of Harmony Montgomery, who's been missing since 2019 but presumed dead. Her father, Adam Montgomery, is currently on trial for her murder. A couple of quick things before we get started. One, I wanted to remind you that this is not a psychological evaluation of any kind. These are just my opinions. In addition to that, the goal is not to prove guilt nor innocence of anybody involved, but rather to provide commentary regarding their behavior and their body language. Last thing before we get started is I do want to remind you to like and subscribe if you want to see more content just like this. All right, let's go. We're going to start by watching testimony provided by Kayla Montgomery regarding what happened to Harmony Montgomery. Can you, can you tell the jurors what happened when Adam returned to the vehicle after his methadone treatment? Um, when Adam came back to the vehicle, he could smell urine and he started yelling at Harmony. Now notice the way that she's speaking. Now when we're tense or when we're anxious or when we're recalling things that scare us, oftentimes we get anxious, we breathe heavier, we feel more tense. The way she's talking, it almost seems like it's an irritation. Taking a deep breath, but then just slowly letting it all out. This doesn't seem like somebody recalling a traumatic, crisis-like event. Back to the vehicle, he could smell urine and... So see how she took that deep breath in? Oftentimes when people are tense and they breathe deeply, which does happen sometimes, the way they release it also seems tense. For her, it seems almost like it's inconvenient to be talking about this. And then this happened. So it's interesting the way that she's taking in this deep breath, but it doesn't come out as though this is a stressful or anxious event in this way. He started yelling at Harmony and kept hitting her in the head. So one of the things we're going to watch for is when she closes her eyes. Now, everybody has a different rhythm in terms of why they do this. Oftentimes, it's done because we think about things that we don't like, or when we recall or talk about things we don't like, we close our eyes. It can also be a way to block ourselves from looking at the reaction of the person we're talking to about something. So let's see if a pattern emerges regarding when she does this right here. He started yelling at Harmony and kept hitting her in the head repetitively. You also notice she looked up when she was done explaining this part right here. And when we do that, sometimes it's because we want to see the reaction of the person we're talking to. Sometimes it's out of politeness. Now, we're just starting this, so we're going to have to see if there's any patterns that build. But that pattern sometimes can suggest that somebody wants to see if what is being said is being believed. We'll watch this part again, then we'll keep going. Urine and he started yelling at Harmony and kept hitting her in the head repetitively where were you when he smelt that accident where was the vehicle when he smelt that accident in front of the methadone clinic we oftentimes raise our eyebrows when we want people to pay attention to our face she's raising her eyebrows right here when they're talking about where they're parked in front of the methadone clinic I'm not actually sure why she's doing that but I'm noticing it so I wanted to point that out I'm sure we'll see other points when she raises her eyebrows in front of the methadone clinic. Did you discuss going somewhere with him at any point that morning? Going to get food? Yes. I asked to go to Burger King. You asked to go to Burger King? Yes. And so at some point, did he begin driving the vehicle? Yes. Was that before or after? You'll notice she's closing her eyes when she's saying yes right now. Once again, we're going to keep watching for this, but her behavioral patterns are very interesting. After he repeatedly struck Harmony. After. So there you saw the eyebrows again. After he struck Harmony, he started driving the vehicle again. She felt like that was an important point for whatever reason. Or after he repeatedly struck Harmony. After. What was Harmony doing at that point when he started driving the vehicle? She was crying a lot. She was crying a lot. Yeah, and she was making a weird noise. Was she saying anything? No. And Kayla, I want you to walk the jurors through in as much detail as you can what happened on your route from Habit Opco to that Burger King. Adam, Adam was getting really angry from Harmony. From Harmony. Um, peeing in the car, and he repetitively kept punching her. 
So there we saw the eyebrows again. So what she wants you to hear is she was saying that he get, was very angry because Harmony peed in the car. So the idea that that's why he was angry is an important point to her when it comes to the way that she's telling this narrative. That's what she wants you to focus on. Angry from, Ar from Harmony um, peeing in the car and he repetitively kept punching her um, on the way to Burger King and there were a couple red lights and when we were at red lights he would like go over the driver's seat like in between the passenger seat and he was just punching her repetitively in the head so basically what she's asking you to focus on is when harmony used the bathroom on herself and also that he was striking her on the drive to burger king those were the two points. It's interesting that there's other areas where she's not trying to emphasize. She has unusual body language in this way. What you've said. So right now you see her biting her bottom lip. This is something we do when we're anxious. Sometimes we do this when we're trying not to say something. We remove our lips. We withdraw our lips in a sense. In the passenger seat and he was just punching her repetitively in the head. And you've said there were several times where he punched her repetitively, repetitively in the head. Yes. How many times did he hit her? Uh, I can't count. I don't know. Were you counting? Now, you'll notice that she raised both of her shoulders when she said, I don't know. We typically associate that with somebody becoming more vulnerable because they're elevating their whole body. So we watch for double, double shoulder shrugs. If somebody says, I don't know, we genuinely believe that they don't actually know when they're doing that. So does that mean that she's telling the truth? No, but what it does mean is that she doesn't actually know how many times that Harmony was struck. That is probably true. Repetitively in the head. Yes. How many times did he hit her? Uh, I can't count. I don't know. Were you counting? No, I wasn't. How many lights did that car come to where he repetitively struck her? At least two or three. Between Habit Opco and the Burger King, did the defendant say anything to Harmony? I told her to shut the, shut Stop crying. She is awfully still right now. You notice how quietly she speaks. This may just be how she is all the time, but she presents in such an almost tired way. She looks sort of sluggish. She doesn't seem to be completely there in that sense. She's answering questions, obviously, and she's able to historically recall whatever they're asking her for the most part, but she does seem to be very slow, very measured. It overall, actually, appears to be fairly calm, but... Her presentation obviously is odd. I'm sure most people that watch this recognize that as well. He said she was making a weird noise. So watch her eyes blink right here, for example. Stop crying. Her blinking is very slow, and there can be a variety of reasons for that, but that is noteworthy because it's an involuntary response. So the fact that an involuntary response is that slow is a little bit unusual. He said she was making a weird noise. Yes. Can you describe it? It was like, uh, I can't even describe it. It was like a, like a moaning kind of noise, but crying. It was just weird. I, I can't explain it. Did you try to help Harmony while he was striking her? Yes. Tell the jurors what you did to help. So you may notice that she nodded her head after she said yes. It wasn't really in unison. And oftentimes that's something we look for. When somebody's really feeling something strongly, they'll say yes and then nod at the same time. It typically isn't yes and then a nod or no and then a head shake. So pay attention to the rhythm that people do this because she's very slow right now. So maybe there's other factors contributing to why that's off, but it is not fully in sync. While he was striking her? Yes. Because he, the look that he gave me was scary. I was scared. What were you feeling when he looked at you like that? Like he was either going to hit me or just. 
Now, I talked about the two-shoulder shrug. Right here, we see a one-shoulder shrug, so a less committed response. Watch this right here. What were you feeling when he looked at you like that? Like he was either going to hit me or just, I don't know. It was weird. Did you go inside to the Burger King or something else? No. I don't remember going in there. So listen to the way that she says this. In the driver's seat. Did you go inside to the Burger King or something else? No. I don't remember going in there. So the way she says, no, I don't remember going in there. It's almost like she's confused when she's responding. And they've talked a lot about substance use and various issues here. So when she talks like this, it's confusing. It's not a direct way of saying, no, we never went in there. It's, no, I don't remember going in there. Almost like she's not sure herself. Did you go through the drive through Yes. And so who ordered the food? Adam did. Where did you go from the Burger King parking lot, Kayla? Went back to Colonial Village. And how did you get there? With the vehicle, Adam driving. Was Harmony still under the blanket when you arrived at Colonial Village? Yes. And that moaning that you mentioned, that weird noise that you... One of the interesting things about the way that she responds, the yeses and the noes, there seems to be a distinct disconnect between the emotions and what's being said. Obviously, there have been tears. It's not that she shows no emotion. But the way that she expresses herself seems emotionless. It seems like there is a real disconnect between what she's talking about and what happened. Did you check on Harmony at any point after the moaning stopped? No. Did Adam? No. You'll notice she closed her eyes when she said that she didn't check on Harmony. She didn't close her eyes when she said that Adam didn't, which means that she's distressed for, I suppose, how she looks more so than anything else in this. Not that they didn't check on Harmony, but that she didn't check on Harmony. Did the moaning stop? No. Did Adam? No. Why didn't you check on her? Because I was scared. When you arrived at the Colonial Village parking lot, when you arrived back there, what what did you and the defendant do? We got drugs and got high. When you say we got drugs and got high, what? So after saying we got drugs and got high, she looked down. We do this when we feel shame, when we all of a sudden start losing confidence. We not only avert our gaze, but literally physically look downward. What What did you and the defendant do? We got drugs and got high. When you say we got drugs and got high, what, what drugs did you get, Kayla? Uh, heroin and crack. And how long did you use those drugs for in that parking lot? Um, probably, we were there for probably 10 or 15 minutes. So for certain people that have a chronic use of certain substances like the one she's talking about, that can have a genuine effect on how people process and feel emotions. Sometimes they don't feel them as strongly. That may be contributing to some of the way that she presents, but there could also be other things as well. There could be different medications or substances that she's using currently that are causing her to look this way. Uh, he took the duffel bag that was in the trunk and... And put her in the duffel bag. So obviously, once she starts crying, she covers her whole face. Now, sometimes we do this because we don't want people to see our reaction. Now, that can mean a variety of things. Some people are sensitive to the idea of others seeing them cry or don't want people to see what their face looks like. Sometimes people are covering their face for other reasons, like they want to obscure how they look at those times because 
of what they've said. There could be a variety of reasons why, but the fact that she's covering her face this distinctly and this broadly is noteworthy. You mentioned this duffel bag from the trunk. Yeah. Had you seen that duffel bag before, Kayla? What was it used yes. for? When we got kicked out of the house, we put clothes in there for everybody. And it was in the trunk of the car. Did you see him put Harmony in that duffel bag? Yes. How did he put her in there, Kayla? <laughs> Like folded her in half and put her in the double bag. <laughs> Once again, it's challenging with her because oftentimes we cover our face. It can, like, as I said, it can be a way to obscure how we're reacting. But it can also be when we're experiencing extreme distress. People sometimes put their face in their hands, that sort of thing. But. Uh, it's noteworthy that she's done this a couple of times while talking about the situation, but not previously. Him punching her and him actually killing her, as he, she talked about earlier, she didn't get as distressed by that. But as she's talking about this, this seems to be significantly more distressing. Did he call 911 at any point? Now we're going to watch some of Kayla Montgomery under cross-examination. He asked you to go to uh, Badera's to get drugs that day because Badera would front you. Overruled. It's cross-examination. You may proceed. Would front you a bag because he never says no to you, right? That's not true. Which part? That he never says no to me. Okay. So that's what she wants people to hear. Out of all of these various things they talk about, you see more emotion with her saying that he never says no to her than so many of the other things that are talked about. It's really remarkable. I'd front you a bag because he never says no to you, right? That's not true. See how high up her eyebrows raised? That's not true. Which part? that he never says no to me. Okay. But on that day, that's why Adam asked you to go up to Badera's to get some drugs. I don't remember that day. Okay. Overruled. So there she is shaking her head no, saying, I don't remember that day. I believe that's true. I really think that there are genuine gaps in her memory, and when we talk about the types of substances she talks about using, that is very plausible. I'm going to show you... Uh, you may be noticing how she's blinking again. I know I point th pointed this out already, but her blinking is so slow and unnatural. A copy. Uh, you didn't remember that day when you spoke to them on June 23rd? Or that you did remember it on June 23rd, but you've forgotten now? I don't remember that specific thing uh -huh. on that day, like me actually going to see Tone and asking for her bag of drugs. I don't remember that. Her body language seems a bit different now. She seems a little more animated when talking about drugs and when talking about buying drugs or not remembering buying them or whatever it was. It's very interesting to see this dichotomy between the way she's behaving now and the way that she was when she was talking about what happened to Harmony. It seems like a very different way of presenting told the police that day, right? Right. And that you and Adam were in the car and uh, you went up to Tones to get a bag of drugs. <sighs> That's me. <laughs> I knew that Tone. See, she's moving around a lot more. She's responding more quickly. It's just a very different presentation. Um, maybe you missed one, but certainly not... It was a regular daily thing, right? Right. And you would get up and you would leave the parking lot, go to the clinic, get your um, dosage, and then go off somewhere else. Right. Might go to Burger King. Yes. Might go to a gas station. Yes. 
might go to some other place and use the You'll notice that she, once again, does seem more emotionally connected when they're talking about this, when they're talking about the substance use, when they're talking about various times and places that she's used it. She's getting more of a reaction out of her. She responds in a slightly more animated way. And it may be because of different feelings and memories and things like that that are connected to these different places and experiences. But it looks very different than, when, once again, than when she was talking about Harmony. The facilities and restroom. I don't remember that. Okay, if you went to a gas station, you would use the facilities, right? Right, but you, never mind. Okay, there were other places that- I pointed out a point earlier when she removed her lips in order to prevent saying something. This is a much better example of that because it's very clear that that's exactly what she's doing right here. She was going to say something that says, never mind, and then she withdraws her lips. So you can see this in real time. That- Okay, if you went to a gas station, you would use the facilities, right? Right, but you, never mind. Okay. And while this specific example is not that consequential, it does show when she actually does this behavior. Places that you went besides a gas station and Burger King, right? Right. So we're going to go ahead and stop here. There's a lot more that we can get into, and I plan to. There's a lot from this trial that I am backlogged on, so I'm going to try to get some more out soon. If there's any other thoughts you have about this, please let me know. What we've noticed from her today is that she's very sluggish, very slow. She looks very tired. There could be quite a number of reasons why that is. But as far as when she was talking about Harmony and talking about what happened, her body language at times was a little bit unusual. The question is, is that due to her history of substance use? Is that due to something that's going on right now? That's unclear, but I'm going to continue to watch this trial. I'll continue to comment on it, and I've got a lot that I need to go back and look at again. If you have anything specific or any people that you specifically want me to take a look at, please let me know in the comments below. Last thing before we get finished up is that I do want to remind you to like and subscribe if you want to see more content just like this. All right, thanks for watching.